So I finally decided to put my fashion degree to some actual use. I made some undergarments today and I want to show you how to do that for yourself. I decided to start with an easy basic set of matching underwear consisting of different varieties of briefs and bras to ensure an infinite supply that's also made out of silk. And I do that because I refuse to spend more money on underwear since everything generally pretty is made out of shit plastic, even in the pricier range. I'm just emotional about this, okay? Also, because of constant washing, Briefs, for example, have an extremely short life cycle, which makes consumption not exactly environmentally friendly. And if you happen to like matching sets of underwear, like I do, you'd have to keep buying new sets every time you run out of the brief part, which left me personally with many, many bras that are still in very good condition after up to 10 years that outlasted their brief counterparts, so no matching sets. But if you do it yourself, you can keep on remaking the briefs if you run out and ensure a continuous matching set. I'm making this video for you to join me and sew along and I start with a brief that is very easy and beginner friendly. The design for this brief is quite a common one, kind of a classic and timeless. However, our idea of underwear as we understand it today is a rather recent phenomenon, which started at least for women only at the beginning of the 19th century. Before that, women used to wear linen shifts throughout different social classes or later split drawers. Linen was a very common material since it is a great fibre that wicks away moisture, keeping you cool and quite hygienic as well. The ruffle texture of this design reminds me of antique statues where the fabric is being beautifully draped over the hips. This is why, although not matching current fashions, I am going to leave it in the level with the hip bone. This I find to be much more flattering for this particular design, especially in line with the reference to antiquity. Fun and sweet fact, in Belarus, where I grew up, this type of panties is called zifirki, named after these uh, dessert meringue thingies. I think my obsession with beautiful underwear started due to my upbringing. When I was a kid, all those women around me growing up in post-Soviet Belarus were so excited about getting just regular basic underwear from the West. And it was considered extremely glamorous in comparison to what they were used to. Basically, all production was state-regulated in the Soviet Union, and supply chains didn't work that great, to put it mildly. So, underwear was not only rather hard to get, it had also just horrible quality and looks. As soon as the Iron Curtain was lifted, people started traveling, mostly to Poland, with huge bags buying everything, and stereotypically underwear and reselling it back at home. I remember very vividly these quite basic ruffled cotton briefs with a floral pattern which my mom had brought back from Poland and they seemed to me just so feminine and lovely. This I think is just one indicator of how bad the economics were and how degrading this regime was to the individual. So I think in a way I tried to catch up with all those pretty things that my ancestors were basically denied. I am also going to slightly lower the center at the back and the front for this design as you can see, this creates a slight optical illusion and pretty lines in general. But when you construct this for yourself, you can make adjustments for the way you want it to be. That is the beauty of making a garment completely by yourself. So you're going to need roughly one square meter of fabric, some elastic and a personalized pattern. I got you covered for the pattern. I made a PDF with detailed instructions on how to construct this pattern for your own measurements and your own preferences. It is free and the link is in the description. Don't be intimidated to try it out, even if this is your first time making a pattern. The process is a bit like painting by numbers. It takes roughly 15 minutes to draft. And after that you'll have a template of your own, in agreement with your own preferences, that you can use over and over again. When your pattern is finished, I do advise you to transfer it onto transparent paper and make a mock-up so you can see whether the side seams are right, the gusset sits comfortably and the roughliness is to your liking. And then if necessary you can adjust your pattern. Here I'm transferring it and marking the arrow of the running thread. I'm also combining the front piece and the gusset by rotating the paper. This will save some time but you can choose to make them separate to save some fabric and join the pieces later with the seam. The gusset lining needs a separate pattern piece. Now you'll have to add seam allowance at the edges. I'm adding 1cm, but not at the center since that is mirrored, it is meant to be cut on fold. The gusset lining doesn't need seam allowance at the side for my finishing method. And then cut out your pattern. 
have some leftovers of this beige silk satin and since I am pigmentarily challenged it sort of matches my skin tone which plays very well into my idea of basic wardrobe essentials. I also know that this particular color and fabric is easily available so that I will be able to remake these briefs and ensure that I have a continuing matching set for the bra that I'm going to make in the future. But there are so many colors and textiles and patterns to choose from. Silk satin is not necessarily a beginner-friendly material. I'm rather bad at handling it myself. However, just try and practice. The result is worth it. For example, the downside of pure silk satin is that it's not very stretchy, but on the diagonal, on bias, it has a bit of a stretch, which we will use to our advantage for this design. This arrow indicates the grain line. It shows you how to align your pattern piece with the fabric. This will make the brief stretch on the hips, which will make it easy to put on. I want to try and describe the difference between silk satin and artificial satin, which is often used in lieu of the former. Silk is made around a cocoon by silk moth or other insects, which makes the fiber itself very long that allows silk textiles to be very smooth and optically shiny. Polyester fibers are also very long and smooth. Think about the endless stringy things from a hot glue gun. But the shine of polyester is optically more flashy and extreme, like, you know, plastic. If you wear polyester on a warm summer's day, it will stick to your body, getting hot. Silk, in contrast, is breathable and stays rather cool. Silk is also much more softer. And in comparison, environmentally friendly, meaning it won't take half a century swimming through the ocean before it decomposes. But you obviously don't have to use silk. Cotton, sateen or linen would be a cheaper and easier alternative. Viscose is also considered artificial silk. It is made out of cellulose, which can be found in trees. Often when it states that something is made out of bamboo, it usually means it's viscose or cellulose. So since the pattern is mirrored, I will fold the fabric on the diagonal, trying to save as much fabric as I can. While folding and placing the pattern, try to pull it slightly in the direction of the weave to make sure you're not cutting into an already stretched fabric. If you are as ungifted at cutting as me, don't be too hard on yourself. That's what I try to do anyways. Use a pizza cutter. After all, it is textile, it is forgiving to a degree. I'm very proud of you. Also, mark with a short snip the center of each piece and where the gusset meets the front piece. For the lining of the gusset, I am actually using this linen. For the front line, I am going to use the edge of the weave to avoid extra bulk in the front. But you can also search this edge off. By the way, there's this video talking about whether this is a pocket, which just shows how little we know about the clothes we wear every day. Well, I'm here to tell you that it is not in fact a pocket, it is the lining for the gusset and it is there to create a healthy environment, since most underwear is made out of artificial fibers and those tend to accumulate bacteria very quickly. So the lining is usually made out of cotton jersey and it is also there to protect the outer fabric. However, in some luxury brands, I've also seen silk being used for the lining as well. So if you want to, you can totally do that. The open edge that kind of makes it seem like a pocket is there to prevent bulk, for obvious reasons, because of seams and seam allowances. On to closing the side seams now. And for that, we are going to use a finishing process, which is called the French seam. You want to place the wrong sides of the pieces onto each other, Make sure your needle is very sharp, silk is demanding like that. Sew them together with a regular stitch, leaving half a centimeter. Turn the seam inside out and press it. Now the edge of the fabric is neatly hidden and is very soft. The next step is to close the gusset in the back piece. First I pin them together with needles. Since these are pieces that are rotated in an opposite direction, you have to stretch the fabric a bit. Thank you. 
and I'm securing them together with a loose stitch very close to the edge to make my life easier for the next step. I'm placing the gusset lining onto this seam. And now I am sewing at the seam allowance. The seam allowance will be hidden under the lining. I am going to measure my elastic now. On the hips make sure it is very tight since elastic tends to stretch out with time, but still easy to get out of. Mark it and just cut it off. For the leg part, make it a bit less tight so it won't push too much against the soft tissue. Now mark the hip elastic into four equal parts. First in half and those in halves again. And we are doing that so we have a guide to distribute it evenly. The elastic will start at the side seam. The next mark needs to meet the center of the front, then the side seam again, then the center of the back and finish at the side seam. The leg elastics need to be marked in half. That mark needs to meet the gusset seam later. And the ends will meet at the side seam. Now it's time to make a stylistic decision, which also depends on whether you have an overlock machine. With an overlock you will get these lovely roughly edges. So turn your overlock machine to the fake roll hem setting. This will search the edge off like so. And you need to go all around the edges. You can also choose to search off the gusset seam, but I just cut mine back to avoid bulk as much as possible. While you're overlocking, gently rotate the fabric so it goes in a straight line under the knife. The ends can be just pulled through with a big needle. Now the elastic needs to be sewn on. Before sewing I practiced on a fabric scrap to see how wide my zigzag has to be for this particular elastic. And I also marked a guideline with washi tape where the edge should be accordingly. Remember we want to keep 1cm allowance for the ruffle. But as I am not very patient and not very perfectionistic, it is only a rough guide for me. Sew it on, starting at the side seam, and stretch the elastic so that the markings meet accordingly. The center of the piece, the side seam, and the center. The ends of your elastic will meet at the side seam again, which is very romantic, so overlap them and close the seam. You can just cut off the end. For the leg cutout elastic, I start at the side seam, stretch it out quite a bit so that my mark meets the gusset seam. While I'm sewing it over the lining, I'm trying to hide its edge under the elastic and I'm also not stretching too much here to avoid discomfort when wearing. At the back I'm almost not stretching it at all, so it won't cut into the squishy parts. The edges of the lining are neatly hidden under the elastic, but if some threads are picking out, you can just cut them back. And this is what it looks like finished. The other method is for when you don't have or don't want to use a serger, and it looks very lovely as well. For that I am using an elastic with this Pico edge. You'd have to mark and sew it in the same way, the only difference being you sew it on twice. First on the right side of the fabric, facing down. The zigzag has to be very close to this Pico edge for it to work, so sew slowly and steadily. Definitely practice on some scraps to find the right zigzag width and length for your elastic and consider that the edge will be distorted a bit while being pulled. Now when we turn over the elastic it acts almost as a fine lacy edge. 
So I just sew it on again with a zigzag seam, constantly pulling the fabric to the left, so it will reveal this picot edge. This elastic will also hide the edges of the gusset lining. Make sure you pull it slightly, so it's all neatly hidden under the elastic. This is what it looks like finished and there are definitely many creative options. You can use contrasting colors for the seams, throw in a bow or two, or maybe buttons, go crazy. They are extremely comfortable and bring some luxury to your day-to-day -day life. I actually made five of these in just one evening, so I know if I run out I just need one cozy evening to restock back again. However, these briefs will show if worn underneath something tight or thin fabric, so if you're not a fan of that, I am currently working on a video on how to make Brazilian cut briefs, which are almost invisible for this kind of situations. 